This video is sponsored by Raycon. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Long ago, all these elements lived together in harmony until the Fire Nation attacked. There was one man who could use all these elements, but when the world needed him most, he vanished. A hundred years passed and my brother and I discovered a new avatar in a, a, a raindrop named Water. He has a lot to learn, but I think Water can save the world. Now that beautiful intro was the intro to Avatar The Last Airbender, one of the greatest animated shows ever made. It starred a really great cast of characters. Raindrop, a raindrop. Flamo, a flame guy. Monkey, a monkey guy. Now this show had incredible story beats. It had tales of revenge, politics, redemption, proving yourself. It's a beautiful story. I love it. It's honestly a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> I fooled you guys. I fooled you. I fooled you all dummies. These aren't clips from Avatar, you dummies. God, you guys are so dumb. So, so dumb. This isn't Avatar. This is Master Raindrop. God, I can't, I can't believe you guys are so gullible. Ew. Let me tell you guys about this amazing, beautiful animated show from 2008. Coming out of Australia, this show paved the way for Avatar. It paved the way for its fame and success, even though it came out as soon as it ended. It definitely was the biggest inspiration for the masterpiece show. Master Raindrop walked so Avatar could run. For people who somehow haven't seen Avatar yet, and I don't know why you'd be watching this video, you might just really like me in that case. <laughs> How you doing? Avatar The Last Airbender was an incredible show. Like I said, with the multiple elements in his storytelling, the animation was also consistently great, and the story just had a clear start and ending, with nearly everything in between being an incredible journey. The characters Aang, Katara, Toph, and Sokka are all memorable and great in their own rights, and the show was beyond successful, so of course people would want to replicate it. Starring absolutely no good voice actors, Master Raindrop follows five elements. Wait, wait, wait a second. Whoa, whoa, dude. Five? Okay, okay, calm down, calm down there, Mr. Raindrop. Maybe I'm wrong, but maybe this isn't a ripoff, actually, because Avatar had four. Had four, and, and this one has five. Just just look at this. They're already up in the ante. Come on, come on. This is more than four. Avatar had earth, fire, air, and water. Boring, boring loser elements. Ew, what does Master Raindrop have? Water, earth, fire, metal, and wood so they're different instantly they're they take more from china's elemental philosophies so it's not like plagiarism of avatar in that sense it's just totally new and original thing i can't believe you guys would compare the two what's wrong with you but then you get to the title sequence and you know maybe the similarities you know sh kind of shed light in a little way you got the intro narration of this world where some fire type people whoever they may be attack the land and you see all the elementals listed one by one with a little dance now it's it's totally its own thing, original and creative. I love it. So in this show, instead of having one bald nerd who controls all the elements to win against the bad guy, you have him split into five separate elemental dudes who basically are all characters from the show anyways. Master Raindrop, he's bald like Aang and plays the main character that we follow. That's why it's called Master Raindrop, I think. I, I mean, it could be a coincidence. Who knows why it's named that? <laughs> There's also Xiao Young, who is the girl, the side character that gives Raindrop lessons about life. That's literally just Katara. That's Katara. This is Katara. There's Earth Girl, who is Toph. Literally Toph. I know you guys are like, whoa, but this one looks like Katara, but no, no, no. This one's Toph because she comes in later. She does Earth. Also, she looks like Roblox. She's not blind. Instead, she's Roblox. There's the monkey, who is Sokka. Straight up Sokka. You know, that quirky, funny, loud dude? Yep. Here he is as a monkey, except monkey isn't a horn dog in this show like Sokka, so I don't know. Can it actually be Sokka if he's not getting girls like 24-7? Nah, 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 totally an original character. And then on the other side of the character sheet, you got Flamo, who is Zuko, the literal fire guy that helps the bad guys, but redeems himself in the end by standing up to the bigger, redder guy. Except Flamo doesn't have a scar like Zuko, so maybe he's actually original. Maybe he is special. Maybe he's not the, you know, he's not the same guy. Oh, oh, never mind. The scar's on the bigger guy, actually, and on his eye in the same place. He got, he, yep, he has a scar. 
hmm, I don't know what to think here. And then there's Slug Dude, who is that adorable chubby big guy who's always around the fire guy, just like Uncle Iroh. The enemy villains get around on hot air balloon cities instead of big, cool, angular boats like the Fire Nation. So, you know, which one does it better? Which one does all these similarities better? I honestly think Master Raindrop does it better. <laughs> uh... I mean, the animation is gorgeous, the main characters look so good, and the comedy is hilarious. Not this one. It's an exciting story called The Legend of the Serpent. You mean The Legend of the Sushi Roll? <laughs> hey! Stop that! Stop! Oh. What? And yet, after all these similarities I just listed, somehow it keeps going. Somehow this show just rips off even more story beats from multiple episodes from the show. Like the Ba Sing Se part from Avatar Book 2, when they go to the Earth Kingdom city and they have to stay there for a while, but the guard's like suspicious and you find out that he's kind of like a bad guy whatever, and he has like these really like crazy guards, whoa. Yeah, it's the same thing like almost to a T. But another weird thing is that not only does this show rip off Avatar, it honestly rips off a lot from Zalin Showdown with like the old wise master, the young students at a martial arts school type thing, and the obsession with dragons like Zalin Showdown almost in the exact same way. They're both like the main mystical beast around this show. And this show is just weird. <laughs> Because trying to watch any episode, you'll honestly think it's just an innocent, really terrible looking show. But if you know almost anything about some of the biggest names in early 2000s animation, it will feel immediately like a bigger piece of garbage because it's a ripoff. But you know what else you should never rip off? Your ears. Because you need them to use Raycon's new everyday E25 earbuds. These super cute and sleek earbuds come at just half the price as other premium earbuds and they sound just as amazing. I wear them whenever I'm training to be the next master raindrop. They really get me going and if there was a wire, I would be weakened. But since Raycon earbuds are super sleek and wireless, I can wear these bad boys for hours on end. Raycon's earbuds are insanely easy to pair with any device, allowing for six hours of continuous listening. And look at these variety of colors, there's so many colors, it's adorable. So click the link in the description to get 15% off your order. I mean, come on, Master Raindrop can't use them, he doesn't have ears, but you do, you have ears, and if you want to make that tiny man jealous, just click the link in the description below. But in a way, the show does attempt to have its own underlying story kind of, unrelated to Avatar or Zaolin. But it's so slow and boring, it stays on a joke for like three minutes at a time just to make it a full length episode. It's fascinating, but also a little sad. It's almost impossible to figure out who this is for. Maybe kids who didn't have access to watching Nickelodeon or kids WB. But even in that case, is this a good substitute? Is this a show worthy of a substitute clone for people not being able to watch shows like Avatar or Zaolin Showdown that it's clearly taking the elements from? That's a pun right there. No, no, it's not. It's not a good substitute. It's a lazy, disgusting, sloppy production. I mean, come on. Look at the design for the raindrop guy one more time. No. No, come on. That's disgusting. He's disgusting. A lot of the animation is honestly gross. So many models are either just ugly or downright terrifying. Like, what is this? What What am I looking at right now? What? Ew. Ew. Oh, God. What is this chicken? Look at it. Look at the chicken. It has balls on its chin. Peter Griffin chicken. Let's try to watch an episode together. Just just one. Just one, I promise. Don't, don't worry. I, I, I promise, man. I promise it won't hurt, okay? Just, just watch it with me. Okay, maybe maybe it'll hurt a little, but that's okay. Let's join our main heroes halfway through their journey in episode 14, Acceptance. Acceptancing the show? <laughs> that's not gonna happen, dude, sorry. So we meet our main heroes on stairs on like this mountain kind of thing, being chased by soldiers and Zuko, I mean Flamo. At the top of the stairs, they meet a door that they can't go inside, but there's a little dude in a hole. <laughs> I offer you greetings on behalf- <laughs> They want to cross through the gate because that's their only way to the other side. Because they gotta get across this whole like big canyon thing or something. Totally original and not at all like the Great Divide episode from Avatar. But luckily, they don't rip off that episode fully because this episode is original. This episode gets freaky. A girl lists them inside the village and they find out that everyone in the village is sleeping. It's put to sleep in this little dream world. Everyone that goes to sleep in this village is teleported to a dream world. This crazy paradise where you can do anything that you want, like change your hair, 
spawn a chair, that's really all they show from it. The other dudes can find a way to show up, Flamo and Iroh, I mean Slug Guy, they sleep at the bottom of the mountain so that they're spawning inside of the dream world. The entire point of this episode is to get this dumb old lady to wake up, cause she's been sleeping too long, or something, I don't really care. And somehow, somehow, the daughter or whoever she is doesn't know that. She doesn't know she's sleeping. If she's sleeping, she would be in the dream world, right? Like every single person in this village, and this is a paradise. This is literally a village where if you sleep, everyone around you appears in the dream world. And you are you didn't know that your grandma was in the dream world. You didn't. You didn't figure that out. You've been here how long? This is literally the entire point of your village and you couldn't figure that out. Dumb. Meanwhile, the bad guys hire some ugly elephant and the rest of the village is mad there are outsiders in their village. So the elephant dude brings spooky wookie nightmares like those scary dudes in green skies. Ah, I hate that color. No. So when that all just like, you know, goes away, they search for the grandma. They look everywhere, everywhere, yelling her name and yelling for her to come out. Hey, guy, yo, grandma, where are you? They can't find her though. Where could she be? Oh, she's literally next to them. She's just been ignoring them the entire episode, literally ignoring their callouts. And that's kind of hilarious. You can see her since the start of the episode and she just keeps swinging on a bench. She don't care. She really doesn't care about everyone else. Big non-Zuko fire guy, whoever he is, now appears and makes all the elements have individual nightmares like beaches and Roblox Toph burns alive in the burning gas ball of the sun. And Katara gets like, um, yeah, but eventually they all wake up and they give grandma some tea and that wakes her up. That's it. That was literally it. So easy. So beyond easy. So after looking at that one episode, what do we all think of this show, class? Oh, oh there's no one here. In most episodes of the show, it's hilarious how it drags on just for so long. While few episodes of the show actually take story beats from Avatar itself, the ending is almost a clear cut from the ending of Avatar. Spoilers for Avatar, obviously, but the hot ed guy ends up helping the people he clearly was meant to be friends with, and he redeems himself. And the main character battles the bigger redder guy to use all the elements combined to render the big guy completely powerless. This show is just fascinating. Like, I wouldn't be so mad they ripped off Avatar if they ended up doing something creative with it. Creative with the premise, at least. But no, it's a clear cash grab. And that's how every single episode in the show goes. I watched almost every episode from the show and that's how everything goes. Small conflict, tomfoolery from the villains, and insanely easy solutions. And there would be nothing wrong with that if there was literally anything else redeeming about the show. But no, it's impossible to watch without wanting to tear your eyes or ears out. All the characters are annoying, all the story beats drive you insane, and the villains are just the biggest clowns. Ha ha ha, they chase down the good guys. Ha ha ha, their own plan backfires. <laughs> over and over and over and over again. And this just ends with 26 episodes evenly. Nothing more, thank god. It's a weird time capsule into something that obviously wanted to capitalize off of Avatar. Wanted to capitalize on the elemental type storytelling without having any talent to show you what you could do with that type of idea. The official YouTube channel doesn't even seem confident on its own show. Every episode starts a couple seconds into the intro and you never get to watch the credits. Okay, okay, goodbye. Okay, by show, Master Raindrop is just, it's not the master of anything. Definitely not the master of raindrops. Master of making me want to sleep, probably. That's for sure. <laughs> Burn. Long ago, there were five elements. Boredom, plagiarism, annoyingism, stupidism, and da-ism. Only Master Raindrop, master of all five, could stop them, but luckily, he vanished. Thank God. Thank God he vanished. He's gone. Poof. Melted?